Hi, everyone. My name is Parker, and I'm a product manager at Google AI. I'm here with my colleague, Ludo, to talk about how you can build with the Responsible AI Toolkit. Today, we're going to give you a very quick overview of Responsible AI at Google and the Responsible AI Toolkit. We'll then illustrate how two of our tools, Fairness Indicators and the Language Interpretability Tool, can be helpful in a real-world example. First, it may go without saying that AI is transforming the world we live in. As creators of new products, it's staggering the range of new opportunities created by AI across so many different sectors. And yet, for AI to be truly useful and valuable, it needs to be built, tested, and operated responsibly. At Google, we have a set of principles that guide our approach to responsible AI. These include the seven listed on this slide, as well as four applications of AI that Google will not pursue. We've developed the Responsible AI Toolkit to operationalize these principles at Google. We open sourced the toolkit a couple of years ago and have been adding resources to it ever since. To better contextualize the toolkit, let's take a look at a typical machine learning workflow. Building AI responsibly means answering hard questions at each step in the life cycle, from problem definition through to model training, testing, and deployment. While the specific questions that you ask depend on your own unique principles, the tools we've developed are designed to be flexible and to help you answer them. Our Responsible AI Toolkit is a collection of technical resources to help you and your team at each stage in the lifecycle. We encourage you to take a deeper look at these resources online. They include Colab tutorials, documentation, and user guides, which can be accessed via the QR code shown on this slide. Today, we're going to zero in on two tools that can help you evaluate and probe your models for unfair bias. We'll introduce the tools in a simple, real-world example, which we spoke about in our previous talk at Google I.O. this spring. Imagine that you are the owner of a new restaurant chain. Here's the stylish interior of one of your restaurants. After eating, your customers leave online reviews about their experience. As a diligent owner, you decide to use ML to analyze customers' online comments and feedback to assess customer satisfaction and help you come up with new ideas for how you can improve your restaurants. As a first step, you decide to build a sentiment classifier that assesses the degree to which each customer's comment is either positive or negative toward their experience at your restaurant. The inputs to the sentiment classifier are the text body of the review, the review metadata, and any associated images. We have two main objectives. First, we want to ensure that our sentiment classifier has high overall accuracy for predicting sentiment. Second, we want to make sure that the classifier does not disproportionately misclassify reviews based on sensitive identity characteristics that may be mentioned in the reviews, for example, like language, gender, or race. We'll first demonstrate how you can use fairness indicators to perform a disaggregated or sliced evaluation of your model's performance to check whether your model is achieving your two main objectives. But first, it's worth briefly mentioning why analyzing models for fairness is really hard. First, fairness is highly contextual and almost never reducible to a single statistical definition. In any real-world setting, it's important to acknowledge and embrace this fact and explore multiple qualitative definitions and statistical measures of fairness. Second, fairness testing requires iterating with a large number of stakeholders. So you need mechanisms that make it easy to share the results of evaluations with others. Thirdly, many real-world ML systems operate at very large scale, so you need tooling that allows you to evaluate your model on large data sets and as part of repeatable pipelines. Fairness indicators can help you solve some of these challenges. First, fairness indicators makes it easy to zero in on the performance of your model for specific subgroups or demographics. It also comes preloaded with some of the most common fairness metrics, which means you don't have to commit to a single definition up front. Second, fairness indicators provides an interactive UI and dashboard for exploring and sharing the results of your analyses with others. Here is a snapshot of the Fairness Indicators dashboard. Within the dashboard, you can select one or multiple fairness metrics, 
select which slices or subgroups you want to review, set different decision thresholds, and review and share output as charts and tables. Lastly, Fairness Indicators is scalable and flexible. It can be run as part of TFX's evaluator component, as a TensorBoard plugin, or as standalone binaries. It also supports both TensorFlow and non-TensorFlow models. With that background, let's return to our restaurant review classifier example. We can use fairness indicators to evaluate our first objective, which is accuracy. We use the presence of gender identity terms as the category in question for our sliced analysis. We wouldn't want the presence of these terms to unduly influence the outcome of the classifier. Fairness indicators shows us that reviews containing terms implying certain genders actually have a lower accuracy than other reviews, which is concerning. Now we turn to our second objective, which is to minimize any differences in error rates, and specifically, false positive rates. This graph shows us that reviews containing terms that imply certain genders tend to have a higher FPR than other reviews, especially for the male gender. This means that they are far more likely to be classified incorrectly as positive, which could lead to biased, misleading conclusions for your assessment efforts. Now that we've identified a couple of issues with our model, we can take this slice of our data, in this case, customer reviews that contain gendered terms, and we can use another tool from the Responsible AI Toolkit, called the Language Interpretability Tool, to do an in-depth analysis of the model's performance. Ludo, over to you. Thank you, Parker. Now we can use the Language Interpretability Tool, LIT, to further investigate these findings. LIT is complementary to fairness indicators and serves a different purpose. It's not about inspecting average global metrics on the whole dataset, but it allows you to build intuition about the model prediction patterns by interactively inspecting the model, often starting at data point level. Since the, the last lead de demo at Google I.O., we have made good progress, and we want to share that with you today. Let's keep building on our I.O. example. This is a lead UI with all modules visible. It can be intimidating, but the tool is fully modular, and you can choose different views with the module you need. Think of it as a toolbox to inspect your model. For clarity, we'll only zoom on specific modules in the next slide. The data table module displays your dataset in the UI, and here we see all the restaurant reviews in your dataset. Lead also allows you to tweak the text and evaluate examples side by side, a concept known as counterfactual testing. Let's try this for the data point selected here, a seemingly sarcastic negative review. Let's change the gender reference in this sentence. In Lit, you can edit the data point directly in the UI and add it to the dataset, and compare the old and the new versions. The bar graph shows that the classifier considers a sentence with waitress more likely to be negative sentiments than the identical one with waiter, even though these words probably shouldn't bear impact on sentiment. Lit allows to use silency methods like Lime or integrated gradient that indicate how much each word accounts for the model's prediction. The identity term waiter and waitress are darker in color than the surrounding words, indicating that they have a stronger prediction power. This could be one of the hidden causes behind the disparities we surfaced in Fairness Indicator. But we can do further probing. Beyond just comparing single points, you can edit a batch of data points. The model seems to be influenced by the gender noun waitress, but does it react to gender pronouns too? We'll change all the masculine personal pronouns to feminine ones. We can now look at the 19 pairs of similar data points with different pronouns. We notice that on sentences with many tokens, the prediction doesn't change based on pronoun. But when the sentence is short, like this one with only three tokens including the pronoun, the model does make a difference between the two examples. This might be an interesting insight when you test this model before launch. So you think of testing with shorter sentence. So far, we looked at how to interpret a model using an input feature like the known waitress. But we know that there are many other words that represent this notion of gender. What if you're more interested in how this notion of female gender concept influences the model in general? TCAV is a method developed at Google Brain by Bin Kim and others that can help you do this. TCAV shows how important a high-level concept like the female gender is for prediction class. And you can do this after training without even thought of the concept of gender before training. To capture the impact of a gender concept, LEAD creates a concept activation vector, or CAV, from our selection of data point exemplifying that concept. 
Here, for instance, we can group together sentences with female pronouns as well as various females-oriented nouns. It is important to carefully think of how you build your vector for it to be representative of this high-level concept you're trying to capture. Once you have this vector, we calculate a CAV score. Here we can see that the concept of female gender represented by my CAV is indeed influencing my model, because the CAV score is high and statistically significant. Look at the blue score bar. It's below the gray baseline. This means that the female gender is contributing to the negative sentiment classification. TCAV is a powerful method when your goal is to get intuitive and global behavior characteristic of a model. To build relevant CAVs, we recommend that you read our website and documentation. We are pleased to announce that we are releasing today our new version of LID. On top of TCAV, it includes some preliminary features for image and tabular data, and you can find more in our documentation. You can use LIT with your own models and data by installing the PIP package LIT NLP. LIT is framework agnostic. You can use it in TF or other frameworks, and in many surfaces like notebooks or running as a standalone server. LIT is also model agnostic. It works with classifier, regression, seek to seek, and other model tasks. To set it up with your own model, you need to define a LIT model that can make prediction based on a given input, which is defined in the input spec, which in this case, includes the text review and the ground truth sentiment label. The output spec defines the model output, which in this case a classification score with zero for negative sentiment and one for positive sentiment. For your data, lead has been primarily designed for text, but we have preliminary feature, as I just said, working now for image and tabular data too. To set it up with your own data, you need to create a lead dataset class that loads your data into memory and specify the name and types of all the features in the dataset. There are many more tools than the ones we mentioned today in the Responsible AI Toolkit, which collectively represent the work of many teams across Responsible AI. We encourage you to check them out and talk about Responsible AI questions at the new TensorFlow Forum. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have any questions or feedback. Thank you.